Hey, hello friends. Thank you for joining me again. So I'm just about finished. Whoops. <laughs> Hang on. It helps if I... Uh... Plug in the microphone. Hang on. So as soon as I can find it, I'll plug it in. Okay, coming to you. Sorry for the... Difficulties there. Are we registering? We are. Okay, just about finished. Let me give you a little wild ride just for a second. Give you a close-up view of uh, the faces that I have just finished. So that's what they look like. Um, I'm fairly happy with that. Happy with the figures. And I'm nearly finished with the entire painting. A um, little bit of touch up just here and there. A um, little bit more reflection on the floor down here, for instance, just a little bit. Not much. I don't want anything. The painting is nearly finished. I don't want anything too jarring happening at this point. It's, it's more my, it, I'd be do more to ruin it. <laughs> than anything so be very very light-handed some hints of candle contemporary holders here even that's too much there we go that's good okay now the main thing I really want to work on here is uh, Casey I'll show you first of all a trick that I often do when I'm painting from a photograph. So again, here is the, the photograph that I'm painting from. There's Casey's tux. You don't see much there. So what I do is I edit that photo and I make it, I don't know if you can tell or not, but I make it way exaggerated too bright. I shift the, I shift the exposure way over toward the light end of the spectrum and then increase the contrast just a little bit so that now I can actually see uh, details in the tux that I couldn't see before. And uh, I have, I don't think it's unique to me by any means, I have a formula for painting any modeled, variegated, shaded object face, clouds, tree, especially anything that's very busy. Um, and that is mid-tone, dark tone, light tone, in that order. Mid, mid, then dark details, then light details. Now the tux is basically already finished, of course, with the, the mid-tone. But I'm going to come in here and, uh, first of all, I'm creating, let me let you watch my... Uh, my palette just a little bit. So I'm, I've got some oxide red and ultramarine blue. And I'm mixing together to create you know, fake black. And I'm going to add white straight to that. Oh, and that's, now I see that it's too brown, so I want it grayer than that. So I add, or cooler than that. So of course I'm adding Okay, so what I have here is a very dark, um, very dark gray, but I believe it's lighter than what's on the canvas right now. Barely. Let me, I'm going to lighten that just a little bit. And again, a little bit more blue. I wanted to want it too brown. Okay, so my formula is medium, then dark, then light. So believe it or not, <laughs> he, as dark as this is, and it's almost black, it's, but it's actually, it's actually my medium layer. It's my mid-tone layer, because in just a second, I'm going to reach for some pure carbon black paint that I have on my palette. Look at that. 
I guess it's okay. It could be actually a little bit cooler. Yeah, there we go. In a way, you could just say I'm setting up soup. <laughs> I'm setting up a little bit of uh, wet black paint. I think that's dark enough. I don't want it black, truly black. I don't want it completely black. Of course, that would be that would create just a, a black abyss, a black hole <laughs> in my painting. So. Even though I'm sure it looks black to you, it's actually not. Now, so that's my mid-tone. Now, dark details. And this, without cleaning my brushes, just wiping them off. I'm now dipping them in carbon black, which I think is the blackest paint that we have available to us as artists. So that... What I'm so that the dark that I'm putting, yeah, absolutely, it certainly does show up. Wow. I better be kind of careful with this carbon black. It would be easy to overdo it. A little bit goes a long way. Just a tiny hint of shadow along the lapels. And forgive me, I know you guys probably let me bring you in here closer and see if see if you can even see. What's going on here? Zoom in as much as I can. I'm not sure that you can even see what I'm doing. In which case, this would be a very boring broadcast for you. But trust me, I can see it. And I think you probably can too. So I, does this make sense to you? I'm, I'm looking again at my the image on my camera, my phone camera. And the the version of it that I pumped the uh, exposure way 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 slid the exposure bar way off to the right to to make it show up it allows me to see some of the wrinkles and shadows in this otherwise what would otherwise be a completely black tux Is that making sense to you so I can see details because I've tweaked or modified the the photograph okay I think that's enough now I'm going to wipe these brushes off again so now you've seen me do mid-tone which again is a formula that I use the 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 the, the, the significant thing about this formula is the order you have to do it if you want it to work you have to do it in this order mid-tones covering much area dark details then light details it does not work in a different order. Now, of course, every rule can be broken. Yeah, 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 yeah. There are times when you can do funky, weird things, of course. Um, but you better know what the formula is first, and then you only break it when it's absolutely necessary. So now I'm mixing up a lighter gray. It's still a very dark gray, but it's lighter than uh, what I put down initially. And I think I think I think that I want this particular gray now to be a little bit on the warm side, so it'll look like it's picking up this warm light. And um, there's no question I'm going to do at least two layers of this light color. That is to say, I'm going to put down one shade of pale gray. Forgive me. I know again here you probably can't even see what I'm doing. That's how subtle it is. I can certainly see it. But you probably, the camera probably is not sensitive to pick up. But I'll, I'll be doing another layer in just a minute. Hopefully you'll be able to see that. See that. Uh, just a hint of a button right here. So a, a, a sort of a shorthand, sort of smart aleck answer to the question, how do you paint a black tux? The answer is by not using, by not painting black. I mean, I'm mean using black paint, but I'm not using it uh, much. I'm not painting straight out of the tube much, just a little bit of those details. 
Uh, same, same question, or not a similar question. How do you paint a white dress? Like, how do you paint? I will check that V. I'll check the V on that, that woman. Make sure. Thank you for, for pointing that out. Let, uh, let's see if, uh, if it, sorry about all that jerking. Okay, um, I think that'll do for the light areas. Now, I'm going to add a little bit more white to this gray to make it just a little bit lighter. Same as I do out throughout the rest of the painting. And just a, here and there, tiny touches of gray up there on the collar right here on his shoulder. And then finally, the lightest area will be um, over here where the light is breaking in uh, from the compared to everything else I've been doing a very light <laughs> compared to everything else like pale orange brown pale orange brown and again I'm going to lighten that just a little bit more and paint the edge I do not want this edge razor sharp I want it quite soft so that it looks like the light from the window behind the groom is coming around cascading around curving around as it actually does of course around the, the curved shape of his body, around the curved shape of his tux. And then finally, there's one, am I in? Yeah, I am. Let me lower you down just a little bit. Um, I'm looking at the photograph. There's one tiny little break between his legs, right about here. Just a little smudge of light. That's good enough. I'm going to give oh, just a tiny bit, again, tiny bit of definition, not much, along the edge. Forgive my fingers there. <laughs> I think that's all. And I might be done with the painting. Let's let's back up and uh, take a look at it. I am going to check the the V neck and and make sure that I am accurate there. Yeah, I believe I am. Um, here's I'll show it to you. Here's the graph. I don't know if you can see it or not. In fact. The, the V on her dress actually is slightly lower, <laughs> a little bit lower, lower cut than what I've got. So I'm, I'm, I feel like I'm safe in that regard. Okay, so I'm done. Yahoo. That means, of course, that I'm free to look at the painting <laughs> for one more day or a day or two. Leave it. I love if I can leave it in my studio and I think I can. I think the, my client will let me hang on to it just a little bit longer, which is a very, very much of a luxury to be able to look at it um, with fresh eyes tomorrow or the next day. By the way, I will be, I'm painting this evening uh, downtown. I'll, I will broadcast if I can at a function and uh, public function. And I'm painting likewise tomorrow at a public function. I'll be inviting you. I'll be broadcasting to both of those. So they're very simple. Tuxedo, how to paint a tux black. The answer is don't paint it black. How do you paint a dress white? The answer is don't paint it white. I'm being a little bit smart, Alec, you know, because you, you do use black and you do use white, but not until the very last, only, only very limited. Anyway, I ramble on, so I better wrap it up there. I'm going to sign this painting.
Thank you guys for watching. I appreciate it. And again, I'll be broadcasting later tonight with a